And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Brought to you by good friends over at Skip. It's time for another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice, Week 16, Mailbag Edition. Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna Dew with you. What's going on, Pete? What's up, Nick? Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL, and we've seen a lot of deliveries in terms of injury returns, Anna, right? Aiden Hill, Arturi Lekkinen, the list goes on. Some really good ones. Also, the LA Kings reeling right now. Looking forward to getting to it. So much has changed. A lot of folks coming back. The LA Kings, my goodness, we were talking about how they were looking like the best team in the NHL just a couple of weeks ago. So lots to get into here, guys, before All-Star break. Oh, there's so much to get into, namely Nathan McKinnon, Nikita Kucherov. The Hart Trophy race is heating up as well as we bring in today's guest, Chris Meany of Dangle Bet Selly on the FTN Network. What's going on, Meany? What's going on, guys? Uh, always appreciate the invite. We're getting close to a little bit of a break in the NHL, but uh, man, I watched the Kings last night and they looked awful again. Uh, I don't know what the heck's going on with those guys. Not good. Well, let's start there since you brought it up because I, I think it's so fascinating. You're the only person in the world tweeting about Pierre Luc Dubois on a daily basis. So uh, <laughs> if you want to start there with PLD, I think you believe in this guy in the second half. But just your your general scope of the LA Kings from a fantasy point of view, like on my notes this week or today's show, uh, was a buy low on Cam Talbot. But again, that doesn't go off to a good start, obviously, with that game against Buffalo here. Yeah, he's allowed at least five goals and I think three straight outings. Uh, he's really struggled. I mean, the Kings game from a five and five standpoint is still great. When you look at their numbers, they're among the leaders in shot attempts allowed in shots, uh, but they're near the basement since December 1st. They have the third worst shooting percentage in the NHL, and they're right there with the Florida Panthers and some of the other elite teams in the NHL, like the Oilers, generating high danger chances, scoring chances. Uh, but right now they're struggling. Yeah, I've been talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois a little bit. I don't fully believe in him, honestly. I think he's a great player. But his placement in the lineup is just not fantastic. With the Jets, this was a guy that was a top player, top power play. He had like nearly 40 power play points and combined two seasons with Winnipeg. And he scores his power play goal last night, just his third power play point of the season. They put him up on the top line with Kempe and Kopitar. And I thought, okay, here we go. They're trying to get this guy going. Just like why Johnson and Dallas put him on the top line, try to get their star players going. And it lasted two periods. He was back on the third line after that. They put Quinton Byfield back with Kempe and Kopitar, and Byfield scored a goal, picked up an assist on the game tying goal, and then that's it. And last night, he was pretty good on that top line as well. So I don't know where this turns around. Maybe when they get Victor Harvardson healthy, maybe it gives him a little bit more balance up and down their lineup. But uh, no, I don't think he's a buy low candidate. I don't think he's really worth your time unless you're in a 14 team league and you're trying to stream. It's, it's not great for LA. I still believe in them overall as a team, but they're. I find when they get behind games, they're not that team that can come back, you know, and score a lot of goals. They got to get up early and then they play that trap style and then they need good goaltending. So right now it's it's not looking good for L.A. Meanie talking about the metrics for the L.A. Kings and saying they still look good, but they're not doing well is like me talking about the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> so that is really, really unfortunate for L.A. right now. But I was going to say, like, Quinton Byfield's like the big name that's sticking out for me for the Kings. And outside of that top line, there really isn't much there. But some other teams that are in the mix to hunt for this playoff spot, the Calgary Flames seem to get production up and down their lineup. So if you had to choose between the L.A. Kings and the Calgary Flames to stack, Meanie, despite how top heavy the Kings are, which team are you rocking with? I think from a fantasy standpoint, I may go with the Flames. There's a lot that they have to offer up and down their lineup. I mean, Igor Sharangovich is still sub 50% in Yahoo leagues, and this guy has got 20 goals. He scored 20 goals before as a devil in and up and down the lineup in New Jersey. And and right now there seems to be some chemistry with Elias Lindholm and Jonathan Huberto is playing his best hockey as a Flame as well. Does Calgary ship Lindholm in a couple of weeks? Like, that's possible. Uh, and that would hurt Sharon Govich. But Blake Coleman has been pretty steady as well. I think from a real life NHL standpoint, I believe in the Kings a lot more. I think that, you know, they have more firepower up and down their lineup. I think just the style that they play is is really tough. I mean, they ran into the Oilers in back to back years, but they gave them a really good go in the playoffs in both of those seasons. But if you're looking for some, you know, a little bit of a boost in your fantasy hockey squad, I think taking a look at some of those Calgary players is the way to go. I saw a stat that blew my mind the other day that Sharon Govich has the most goals of any player that moved this past offseason, which is something that nobody would have ever seen coming, honestly, in a million years with him going from Jersey to Calgary. 
uh, thinking that, right, he would be going from a great team to a, one of the worst teams. But yeah, that's a, an incredible story with Sharon Govich, must own player in all formats. And then sticking in that Pacific division, wanted to touch on Aiden Hill's return. This guy has like 11 wins in 16 games this year with an elite save percentage and shutouts to boot. I mean, where do you rank, Chris, Aiden Hill, assuming he stays healthy the rest of the way? Is he a top five goalie to stay or more in that six to 10 range? I think he's more in that six to 10 range. He certainly has top five upside, which we saw. I mean, you just, you know, you alluded to it. The, the start that he had in the Golden Knights was was fantastic. And the playoff run that he had last year, too, was was unbelievable. Um, unfortunately, he suffered that injury. He hasn't had a, a lot of starts in a season on his NHL resume. So I don't know if that caught up to him, The all the work that he got early on. Go back to five and five numbers. This Golden Knights team isn't playing great defensively, you know, of course, they're missing their top two centers and Jack Eichel and William Carlson. They're missing Shea Theodore on the blue line. They've allowed the third most shot attempts at 5-5 five, five per 60 since December 1st. This is a team that you just don't see that from over the past couple of years. <laughs> they're pretty stingy at 5-5. Five and five. So I believe in the talent to turn this thing around when they start getting healthier. Uh, and I believe in Aiden Hill as well. So maybe he's a buy-low candidate potentially hanging around the waiver wire. Uh, I wouldn't imagine, but I would say top 10 Pete is a, is a pretty safe bet for Aiden Hill the rest of the way. Look, look I, I would say goalies just scared, scare me in general. It's such a volatile position. Fair. Aiden Hill comes back. He goes back on IR for the next two games. Like I try to sell this guy in a hurry. I just, uh, I, I believe in the guy. I think he's great. He wins a cup last year. He just can't stay healthy. And that, that goes for a lot of goalies in this league. I want to shift this conversation to what's happening in Chicago. Am I the only one questioning what this means for the future of Connor Bedard, at least in dynasty leagues over the next couple of years. Like they, they re-signed Peter Morazic two years, 8.5, Jason Dickinson, Pete's boy, two years, 8.5, Nick Foligno, two years, 9 million bucks. Like, what are we doing here? It's a fantasy graveyard. It, it feels that way in Chicago for like X amount of years. Like, unless you believe in contract your Taylor Hall next year means. I don't. Um, I, this is going to be a long process for Chicago. They're going to have a top pick again, if not the first overall pick. Celebrini could be on their team next year. It's it's very possible. Um, yeah, I mean, they're they're not going to attract a lot of free agents, right? They're going to have to go the route that they did in last season and try to get some veteran players and, and just have a, a voice of reason and some experience surrounding a guy like Connor Bernard. It's, they're not going to be able to flip the switch like some teams have been able to do and luck it into to lottery picks like the pick Pittsburgh Penguins, you know, bye bye Mario. Oh, here you go. Here's Sid the kid. And True. you're going to get Malkin and Latang and Marc-Andre Fleury and, and all those guys. So it's going to be a long process. Look at the Leafs. The Leafs were at the bottom for a long, long time. And, the, you know, they got Matthews and Nylander and Marner, all those pieces. So it's it's going to take a lot of time from a dynasty standpoint. I wouldn't look into it too much. Uh, you, you know, you have a, a superstar forward that's just a kid who's, who's already proven that he's going to be a really good player in the league. But it's if you're a Blackhawks fan, you're in for, for a long ride. Guys, it's kind of given New Jersey Devils. It's given Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes yeah. type of vibes right now in Chicago. And also put some respect on Jason Dickinson's name right Please. now, Nick. You know, the Please. guy has 15 goals so far this year. He's like the next Alex Ovechkin. But I just want to go back to like talking about goalies for one second. Because we had a lovely question brought in this week by our friends at Skip. But this question is from our very own Pete Jensen who asked me this. And I've been thinking about this for like the last three days, okay? He asked me. Would you rather have, given what's going on in Philly with Carter Hart taking an indefinite leave of absence, Samuel Arison or Charlie Lindgren? Meaning, I would have, I would rather have Arison. I think there's a, a better opportunity for playing time. I agree with Nick a lot too when it comes to goalies and voodoo. It's tough. Uh, like I got Georgie having a lot of spots. It feels like he allows four or five every night, but he gets the W. It's like okay, well, I'll take the win. I'd like him to say, uh, stop a few more pucks, but. Uh, with Arison, you're going to get a majority of, of saves, a little bit of a sprinkle on 65 to one, potentially to win the Calder too. If he, if he continues to play well on, uh, with the flyers, I really like where this team's at. I mean, 25, 17 and six, they got 56 points. They're in third. I don't fully believe, uh, in the capitals, the penguins, the Islanders really, we'll see what Patrick Waugh can do with that squad. Uh, and the devils, um, when they get healthy, I could see them jumping Philly, but this is a really good Flyers team and uh, they, they come at you in waves. Their five and five game is really good. Uh, get this five and five numbers. I was looking at it this morning. Nathan McKenna, number one, 43 points. Nikita Kucherov, number two, 35 points. Number three, Joel Faraby, 33 points. Wow. Like McDavid has 33 points at five and five. He's got the second most primary assist in the NHL behind Matthew Barzell. He's inside the top 10 in goals. He's playing good. 
Uh, Konechny is a fantasy stud. Couture is back in the lineup. Cam Atkinson's back in the lineup. They just acquired uh, Drysdale. I really like this Philadelphia team, and I think the brand of 5-5 five and five hockey that they play is, is really great. They have a top penalty kill. If they can figure out the power play, then maybe they'll give a team a run if they're a wild card squad. But I, I like the, the Urson call there. I think that's the way to go. So there's some dude on Twitter who comes at me once a week saying I don't give any love for the Flyers on this podcast. They're a great team. I've been saying it all season long. They've batted ab- above expectation. Means I just don't know. And Carter Hart, unlikely this guy's coming back this season. How much you believe in Sam Harrison? And in the last three games, they've uh, surrendered 18 goals in the last three. Their next five opponents, Detroit, Boston, Florida, Winnipeg and Seattle. So you're telling me you believe in Sam Harrison this much that he's going to get Philadelphia into the playoffs. I believe in him more than Charlie Lindgren. Yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah. If you're comparing the two from a fantasy hockey standpoint, yeah, he struggled over the past couple of games. They had some really tough opponents. Uh, I thought that they played a fantastic game against the Colorado Avalanche the other night when they went into their barn and they hung around. Uh, yeah, I think he just needs to be uh, above average. I mean, he's a rookie goalie. He could hit a wall if he plays 80% of the games the, the rest of the way. You know, if you picked him up off the waiver wire and, you know, you had Aiden Hill and he's back and you got a couple players that you believe in between the pipes, you could sell high to to somebody who, who needs some help. Uh, that's probably the way to go. But I, I do believe that this Flyers team, just the way Tortorella has them playing, that they've shown me a whole lot more than the Penguins the Islanders or the Capitals this season that I think they could squeak into the playoffs. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. There's one team that you don't mention when you're saying who the Flyers have shown you more than, and that's the New Jersey Devils who are right behind them. One of those two teams makes the postseason. Who do you think's making the cut? It's the Devils. Yeah, it's it's probably why wow. I passed over them. I He's would off say, the Flyers train already. I'm already done. That's it. Philly. That's, um, no, it's New Jersey. It, I mean, we can all agree all the firepower that they have, but they haven't been able to get any goaltending either. They got such an inexperienced blue line when Hamilton went down. You know, I love Luke Hughes and Nemec as well, but these guys are eating up a lot of minutes playing against some really uh, big time forwards on the other side. Uh, they clearly need Jack Hughes to stay healthy and give them some stability up and down their lineup. Nico Heischer missed time. It was nice to see Defoley have the hat trick the other night. He's been pretty cold. Uh, Timo Meyer has been in and out of the lineup, but they have so much firepower and star power in the second half of the season. If they're at full health, I mean, the ceiling is catching the Rangers in the Metro. The Devils actually have a really good road record this year. have been underwhelming at home. A lot of spotty losses but the other day they came at Vegas in some pretty nice waves especially in overtime hit the post like three or four times and a really nice move by Meyer he almost scored so they're buzzing I expect them to continue that also Simone Nemec who you mentioned is up to 12 points in 24 games among the rookie defenseman leaders in points per game behind only his teammate Luke Hughes and Brock Faber of the Minnesota Wild one other question I had Chris You're up in Canada. You watch these teams closely. We posed the question on the Fantasy Instagram account the other day. Which team is the best bet to win the Cup from Canada? A lot of good candidates this year. The Oilers are playing out of this world. The Canucks are atop the standings. Uh, Winnipeg Jets have Connor Hellebuck and an elite offense. And Toronto has a lot of firepower as well. Who Who are you picking based on the odds right now? It's definitely not the Leafs. I mean, I don't want to be a hater, but we've been down this road before from Frauds. Toronto. They've had some great regular seasons, but I don't love their blue line, and I'm not crazy about their goaltending, even though Samsonov has, has been pretty good over the past uh, couple of games. Yeah, that's a really good question because the Jets are have been extremely surprising. I mean, it's like 30-some-odd games, whereas three or fewer goals. Connor Hellebuck is now the favorite to win the, um, the Vesna, and they – went on such a run without Kyle Connor as well. Mark Scheifele has been out of the lineup. I love the addition. We talked about Pierre-Luc Dubois, right? I mean, the Jets, they, they were on the right side of that deal with Ayafalo and, and Gabriel Velarde playing really good. I, I'd say it's the Oilers, right? I mean, Edmonton went on a run last year, and we, the run that's they're on, Stuart Skinner's kind of getting overlooked a little bit. He's been playing some great hockey over this run over the last 20 games. He was fantastic in the second half, too. He had the second-best 5-5 five and five save percentage in the NHL heading into the playoffs. 
they went toe to toe with the Golden Knights. You know, the Golden Knights went on to win the Stanley Cup. So I, I would say it's the Oilers, just given the firepower. I, you know, I like the addition of Corey Perry. You know, he's been to a bunch of Stanley Cup finals before. He put him in your bottom six. It's like another guy that's a voice in the room, some leadership there for him. I think that they need to add something again on the blue line, like they did with at Colm last year, to give them a little bit more stability. They got a great penalty kill. They got a great power play. I look when I look at teams that can go on a run. That's important to me. Are you top ten, top twelve, and special teams on both sides? And they are. So, I'll lean with the Edmonton Oilers here. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Oilers too. I think Vancouver still has to feel pain. Uh, they're having a great year, but I think you have to go through it a bit in the Stanley Cup playoffs, get punched in the face, and come back even stronger. Or you could be the New Jersey Devils and miss the playoffs uh, all completely. Winnipeg's a great story too. I just wonder about their depth, especially tested in a playoff series against like a team like Edmonton. I think Elias Lindholm would make a lot of sense for them. I think they're going to try to add a center there, but that that, that team's very, very interesting to me. But my answer would be the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, delivered by Skip, uh, our good friends, of course, producer Bob writes in. Samson Reinhardt, are you a believer in what this guy's putting together? Because the heart in his name is starting to be heart trophy. I am, yeah. And I think it's <laughs> worth a little bit of a sprinkle as well for him to win the Rocket in case anything happened to Matthews. I hope it doesn't. I mean, we, we need to see that guy on the ice at all times. He's electrifying, but... If anything happened to him, you know, all of a sudden Reinhardt goes on a bit of a run. I think him and David Pashnak are around nine to one to win the rock. He's got 35 goals. I mean, it's the third season in a row. He's had 30 goals. I think he's got eight 20 plus goal seasons on his NHL resume. Yeah, he's got an alarming 27 percent shooting rate. You mentioned the Canucks. So look at the top 10 players in the NHL and shooting percentage. I think there's six Canucks on that list. So that's why I think a lot of people are maybe a little spectacle on when it comes to them. But this is a stud player. I love the Panthers, too. They could come at you in waves, playing with Barkov, who's a pass-first guy. He's on that power play, which seems to score every time. Verhegi's on that unit. Montar's getting his footing now after missing the first couple seasons. Uh, I love everything that the Panthers are are selling, and I'm buying all of it. Um, the only question I had last year about them was Borowski, and the, he, you know, he was great. So even if he's above average, I think that they go on um, a great run. So I, I do believe. I wouldn't sell. It's just so – I mean – it, next year we'll call him an outlier and we won't draft him as high as he probably goes this season maybe as an outlier but you you just ride the wave here with what you got and Reiner. yeah you have to and I'm very curious to see what they do at the deadline like if I'm a team and I'm I'm looking to rebuild or whatever I'm calling about Spencer Knight I would be like you want this player okay you're going to use this type of prospect in the trade my question was completely misrepresented by Nick. By I was the just way. about so I'm to ask it, but I'm going to toss it over to to Pete and Annie just, here. Okay. If you're in a dynasty league, all right, and you're in a dynasty league, are you really holding on to Sam Reinhart and saying, "I can't wait to have this guy next year after this huge career heart trophy type season"? Pete, to me, I'm I'm shipping him out in a dynasty league. You got to sell high if you're in a dynasty league. His value will never be higher than it is right now. With all due respect to the magnificent season contract year that he's put together, I don't know where he's playing next year. And to be honest, Chris, it's a guy that in a span of two years has gone from a third liner to a first liner and in the past has played center or wing. So there are just a lot of variables here at play. So I think you could get maximum value on Reinhardt right now in a keeper or dynasty. Yeah, I mean... It's the best time to do it. Sell high at this moment while he is just scoring every single night. And I think if you're near the top of the standings, you you ride this one out. But you can get a couple really nice young pieces for Sam Reinhardt and improve your status moving forward. Who do you believe in more, Sam Reinhardt or Brock Besser? Sam Reinhardt. I mean, he's he's done it more consistently. I like Brock Besser as a player. I think the last time I was on this show, I... I talked about Brock Pester and, and maybe he wouldn't be able to keep this up. And I had a couple tweets from Canucks fans <laughs> all over me, but I like Brock Pester. I think he's a great player. Uh, he's clearly, um, you know, got a knack for scoring. You find the back of the net. Pew Suter's on that line last night. He had a hat trick. It looked like a really good fit with Brock, um, with um, Miller as well. So yeah, I would, I would say Sam Reinhardt and still an opportunity guys to jump on the Panthers, like 13 to one to win the cup. You know, six to one to win the the East and four to one to win the division. I and like you said, Nick, they're I think they're going to add at the deadline. They got some cap space. Yeah, I, I love the Panthers. They're just built for the Stanley Cup playoffs. And the crazy thing about that, like Brandon Montour, remember him? He was like a top fantasy defenseman last year. He's come back and just hasn't been the same player from a point production. But they're a really really scary team. I want to ask you about your neck of the woods, Chris. At the Montreal Canadiens, it seems like people are a little annoyed at another tough season for the Habs. I don't know why. It's a rebuild, but 
I think from a fantasy perspective, the big intriguing names there are Sean Monaghan and Jake Allen. I think Jake Allen can bring a lot of value in the second half of this fantasy season. I think he's going to get traded to a legit team here. Yeah, I, I think if you're a Canadians fan, there's no real reason to be annoyed. You're annoyed because Kirby Doc got hurt again and Alex Newhook got hurt. And you wanted to see those two players in the lineup. But I think you have to be impressed with uh, Slavkovsky's game. I know he was bumped off the top line in the last game for Josh Anderson. We'll see what the Habs do in their next game. But I've seen some really nice signs from him. If you own him in a dynasty league, in a keeper league, like his offensive awareness has been great since he was placed on that line with Suzuki and Caulfield. So a reason to hold on to him. Monaghan would be a fantastic get for a lot of teams, uh, a yeah. ton of teams. I look at Colorado, super thin down the middle of the ice. He, he's been on the first power play all year long. He plays in all situations on the penalty kill. He's a proven goal scorer. He's been through playoff battles as well. As for Jake Allen, I would agree. It's tough. I wonder if what has happened over the past couple, like his four starts in the last four and a half weeks. And those haven't been good outings. And the Canadians' defensive game has just been awful of late. He just gets in there and he gets shelled. It's not on him. I do believe he would be a great asset for a lot of teams. Absolutely is maybe a backup or somebody who could, you know, I, I'd look at LA. I don't know if they're how aggressive they're going to be, but he could certainly take the net from Cam Talbot or David Riddick. Like, I would certainly believe in that. It wouldn't cost a whole lot either. So yeah, those are probably two players. Maybe David Savard is somebody else, just some depth, like nothing exciting from a fantasy standpoint, but he's also got, you know, a Stanley Cup on his resume. Chris, a little before the trade deadline, maybe too early, but never too early. Is there a team you expect to make a big move that will either skyrocket or make a significant jump in the futures market, I was just, you know, thinking about some of these teams out there. Like, I wonder the Rangers, like, do they find a way to make a move? I know they didn't bring back uh, Patrick Kane in the off season. That's a team that's like very steady, but I just feel like they're always in the action when it comes to the deadline and they have room to improve here. Like they just blew a game against the San Jose Sharks, which is absolutely inexcusable. Yeah, it is. Uh, they were on the West Coast trip. I mean, sometimes that happens to some East Coast teams enjoying the sun too much, I guess, on the West Coast. But yeah, last year with Tarasenko and Kane didn't seem to work out for them too well. I could see them adding, uh, having somebody up on that top line with Zabinajad and Kreider. That second line has been so great. Maybe some depth on the blue line. I don't know how much it'll move their markets. I'd I, I, I believe they're favorites, Stanley Cup favorites right there with Colorado, depending on what book you look at. I go back to the Panthers, maybe the Lightning, the Tampa Bay Lightning are a team. They've always been aggressive at the deadline, whether you like their moves or not, chipping off all their first or second round picks in the future for a bottom six player that uh, Bruce Ball will like. I mean, that's certainly possible. Uh, I go back to Florida. I just think that this team is, you know, they were aggressive a couple of years ago. In hindsight, it didn't seem like it wasn't a great move moving Owen Tippett for Claude Giroux, but you know, Nick, you mentioned Spencer Knight. They got some other pieces that they can chip off. The window is right now, especially with Reinhardt on that deal. So I would take a look at them. I think Colorado's gonna make some moves as well. And maybe the Jets. Lindholm is a nice little Lindholm, Adam Henrique, you know, some some veteran centers that can go up and down the lineup. By the way, Henrique has been awesome for the Ducks, is a, I think is a pretty good pickup as well. We've been talking a lot about a bunch of teams that are looking good and trying to make moves to make a push in the postseason. But one team that's kind of like done and out meanie right now that I still think has a decent amount of fantasy value, especially with the way they've been playing lately, is the Ottawa Senators. Is that a team that you're looking at to add some folks into your lineup, especially with Shane Pinto getting back into the mix and Tim Stutzel like looking like himself as a late? Yeah, you're right, Anna. He has looked really good over the past couple of games. If you look at games played to Florida 43, it's the fewest of any team in the NHL. So if you're looking at ahead, you're up near the top of the standings. You're, you're, you're in a head-to-head -head format. You're thinking about the weeks that matter, the quarterfinals, the semifinals. The Sens got a, a lot of games over that span. I think the window to buy Tim Stutzla is probably closing because uh, of his game of late, but I really like him. Uh, Drake Batherson as well. Josh Norris has been in and out of the lineup, but he's been playing on that top line with Brady Kachuk. I think Tarasenko is a guy that may be flipped. You know, he's kind of on that he's on that third line now. He seems to be the odd man out, second power play. Uh, maybe the Sens move on from him, but I would say Josh Norris for sure if he's hanging around your waiver wire. Probably can't buy on Giroux. He's been the most consistent player for Ottawa over the past two years. But Brady Kachuk is still a top player in, in bangers leagues. And uh, I, I certainly like the the ceiling that Tim Stutzel uh, has. And I know you and I liked him a lot when we did the draft show. He was a high pick, for I think, for both of us. So, yeah, if you can go and get him, absolutely. Another guy I'll throw out as a waiver wire pickup, just in the way, is Wyatt Johnson. 
seeing the move to the top line. I know I just I glossed over him earlier, but three goals and eight points over his last seven. He's got three multi-point games over his last five, three plus shots in four of his last five as well. Jason Robertson and Rupe Hintz are playing amazing at the moment. Uh, so away from Jamie Benn has helped Wyatt Johnson's game out, and he had a wicked rookie campaign last year, and I think he's going to get wing eligibility in Yahoo pretty soon. He's a, I think he's a must-add. I, mean, I love him the rest of the way. Great insight, as per usual, means thanks so much for this, and we'll talk soon, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. Once again, many thanks to Chris Meany for hopping aboard, guys. We're talking about uh, Carter Hart, uh, obviously gone indefinitely now with the Philadelphia Flyers. So Sam Harrison is going to be the guy, Pete. Um, externally, I would look at guys like uh, Ilya Samsonov in Toronto, UPL with Buffalo, Eunice Corpusala with Ottawa. I talked about it last podcast. I believe in the Ottawa Senators here the second half, Pete. Yeah, it's funny. Buffalo, I, I made it a point. I didn't even want to mention them for the rest of the season after <laughs> what happened with the Bills. I just didn't want to mention the word Buffalo. But every single time, it's happened about 10 times this year where you write them off as completely dead and then they upset an elite team. They did it to the LA Kings again. So I don't trust UPL that much. Uh, too much fluctuation with that team on a game-to-game basis. I am looking at Semyon Varlamov. Looks like he's going to start Thursday against Montreal. Favorable opponent. You know the connection with Patrick Waugh. Mm-hmm. Vezina Trophy finalist from 2014, the year that Waugh won the Jack Adams. I was impressed by their shot output the other day when I was in the building against Vegas. The power play looked terrible, but uh, their offense in general has exceeded my expectations this season. So I think Varley coming back from injury is a really good pickup right now under Wah. Nick, can you mention those names real quick? Uh, goalie replacements? Ilya Samsonov, UPL Samsonov. with Buffalo, and Eunice Corpusala with the Ottawa Senators. You're missing one guy, Nick. His is name it? is Davey Satriano, okay? <laughs> That's the guy I go to the waiver wire, pick up, slide him right into the uh, into the crease, and fantasy team explodes with Davey Satriano between the pipes. Right, Anna? Sure. You know, honestly, <laughs> in Toronto, uh, I, think, I think he'd do pretty decent right now. But one more shout-out that I'm going to give. This is deep, 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 deep cut goalie right now, guys. Like, streaming very much short-term, depending on how much he starts, but... Did not hate his first outing. Spencer Martin, Carolina <laughs> yep, Hurricanes. I like that. Looked pretty yeah. decent against the Boston Bruins. They really hung him out to dry in that first game. I mean, you're playing against the Bruins in Boston. First game with the team. They're struggling, and he looked pretty decent. They came out with the win, so you never know. It should be noted, too, Antti Ranta has looked a bit different since coming back from the American Hockey League. Kochekov, I think, is uh, is inching closer to a return. So Carolina's crease in general, but I, I believe in Spencer Martin. I think we've seen what we've done. He's done, excuse me, the last couple of years, and he's shown some spurts of being an NHL netminder. So I like that look, especially behind uh, the Carolina Hurricanes and that, that stack defense. All right, let's get into our Deliver of the Week. It's time for the Deliver of the Week, brought to you by Ooh, Skip, the baby. official food delivery app of the NHL. I'll go first because I feel so highly about this guy. He was demoralized. He was on a sabbatical early January. Elias Samsonov, the last three games, 2-1-0, 1.31, 944, one shutout. So uh, a glimmer of hope for Sammy in Toronto. Pete, who do you have? That's a big statement to shut out the Winnipeg Jets. I know he's had a tumultuous season, but oh, yeah. some respect there for Sammy, no doubt. I'm going Martin Nietzsche. He had a brief injury absence, has come back, scored goals in three straight games with a whopping 20 shots on goal in a three-game span. That's a guy that just rewarded the people that hung tough with him for a couple of games when he was injured. I'm all in on the Flyers right now, guys, and a player we haven't talked about yet, Cam Atkinson. He's on a six-game point streak right now. He's got goals in three of his past four Heater. games. He had nine <laughs> shots on goal just last week against the Dallas Stars. Like, who has nine shots on goal in one game? Cam Atkinson, delivery of the week. I love our sound effects guy. It's always great to have that. That's your deliveries of the week brought to you by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL producer, Bob. Someone on the program, I thought it was Chris Meany, is going to be fined for the... Uh, email chime buzzing and i have a yeah. feeling i know who it is anna dua thank you very <laughs> it's much. not actually um i am a gen z so we have all of our notifications off and silenced at all times okay so, so then i go to pete me. jensen and peter how are you is that you your email going off bill price want to get in touch with you <laughs> i'm yeah i'm a wanted man here with some of these uh emails all hours of the day and night but yeah uh, it may have been me i i kind of just uh shut off microsoft outlook for good here 
Okay, well, well, that's uh, you'll be putting a couple dollars in the fine jar, Nick. You can uh, put a bow on it. We're we're gonna gather um, on Monday for the yep. waiver wire and the collab, the action collab, and then we're off to Toronto for a little uh, fun in the snow, in the freezing cold. Great. Uh, there, there's no snow. It's actually been pretty warm here, and you wouldn't know that. Uh, Olin Zellweger, I wanted to bring his name up to rap, too, with the Anaheim Ducks. Love this kid. 2021 second rounder running that power play. Played 1342 in his debut. One apple. So look out for that, that name if you're uh, looking to stream a defenseman. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Week 17 waiver wire edition coming up next week and then the All-Star break, as we all know. Uh, that's producer Bob. Many thanks to Chris Meany for hopping on as well. For Pete Jensen. And Anadua, I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice, delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.